So today we're going to talk about complex zeros. And when we talk about complex zeros, we talk about complex numbers or the imaginary unit i. So we know i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1, right? So if we were asked to find all the zeros for this function here, that would be like setting f of x equal to 0. We know when doing that, each of these two terms must equal 0. So I could say x minus 4 equals 0 and x squared plus 5 would equal 0. When I solve this, x equals 4, x squared equals negative 5. I take the square root of both sides, root x squared equals, remember to go plus and minus the square root of negative 5. We remember from algebra 2 that x equals plus or minus i roots 5. Okay, now you notice this is a real 0, and this is a complex 0. And it turns out that every complex 0 is going to have two sides to it. And the general statement describing that is that all complex zeros come in what are called conjugate pairs. And think about when we take and find complex numbers, we're typically looking at a solution to the quadratic formula. For instance, if I had something like this, 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 10 over 2, I have 3 halves plus or minus i root 10 over 2. So there's a conjugate pair in there. The pair is that one is the positive and one is the negative. So in other words, I have the a plus bi rule, which is the real and the imaginary. And if that's one of my roots, then a minus bi is another root. So all complex roots are going to come in these conjugate pairs. Now, if a polynomial has zeros of i and 2 but has a degree of 3, what's the other zero? Well, 2 is a real number. And i is a complex. And notice we only have one complex root, or complex zero. Same idea. So I know that if I have a zero of x equals 2, and x equals i, then I know I'm missing this guy's conjugate pair. So x must equal negative i. And that's the other zero. Now we've got to write the polynomial, so we're going to work backwards. I know these came from setting something equal to zero. So I'd go x minus 2 equals zero, x minus i equals zero, and x plus i equals zero. Now, if each of these could equal zero, I could say their product's equal to zero. And if I want to get the polynomial from that, I just FOIL this guy out. I'm going to FOIL the complex terms out first. So that's x squared. There's plus xi minus xi, which goes to 0, and minus i squared. That's one term. Times x minus 2. Now you remember from last year that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this ends up being, let's write this over here, i squared equals negative 1. So this ends up being x squared minus a negative 1, which is x squared plus 1, and x minus 2. And this is all going to equal some function of x. All right? The 0 is just to help us understand where I get my roots or zeros from. So now I'm going to take and Foil that out, I get x cubed plus x minus 2x squared minus 2, writing it in proper order in descending powers of x. I have x cubed minus 2x squared 
plus x minus 2 is equal to f of x. Next, we're going to write a polynomial again having degree 3. These can get a lot bigger, but I'm going to have zeros this time of negative 6 and 3 plus i. So there's my real. There's my complex. But once again, you'll notice there's only one root here, and I need its conjugate pair. So what I have is I have roots of x equals negative 6, x equals 3 plus i, and its conjugate pair is going to be x equals 3 minus i. Same first term, opposite the second, that's the conjugate pair. Now, again, going backwards, this is where it's going to get a little more complicated. I have x plus 6 times x minus 3 plus i and x minus 3 minus i. I'm just subtracting the whole term over. And then I'd have to FOIL that out. I like FOILing my conjugates out first. So when I do that, I end up with x plus 6. There's x squared. Now I'm going to take and multiply this over here. I get a negative 3 minus i times x. And then I get another negative. Three plus i times x, and then I'm going to get a positive three minus i, three plus i. Labor intensive. So x plus six once again. X squared negative three x plus ix negative 3x minus ix plus 9 positive 3i minus 3i minus i squared. Clean all that up. x plus 6. I've got one x squared term. Notice ix, negative ix, those are gone. i squared is negative 1, so what I have is I end up having negative 6i, or 6x, I'm sorry. That's plus 9, and this ends up being a plus 1, so this is plus 10. And that's equal to your f of x term. They want the whole polynomial, so again, I have to FOIL all that out x cubed, like I said, labor intensive, minus 6x squared, plus 10x, plus 6x squared, minus 36x, plus 60, that's equal to f of x. So I have x cubed, the 6x squareds go, plus 10x, ah, shoot. 10x minus 36x is negative 26x plus 60 is equal to f of x. And there's your polynomial. A couple more. So in this case, we're going to use the fact that this function has a 0 of 5i. So this is a root. And we're going to use that to find the remaining zeros. Now, what I will typically do is do synthetic division. So I'm going to take, and I know that this is one factor of the function. So I also know that I have a factor of negative 5i. And what that means is, once again, if those are solutions, x equals and x equals, those are factors of the function. So I also know that x minus 5i equals 0, x plus 5i 
equals zero, which therefore means that the sum of those two, or the product of those two rather, is also equal to zero. And the product of those factors is also a factor. So if I multiply this out, I get x squared. The 5i terms reduce out, minus 25i squared. That's a factor. This ends up equaling x squared plus 25. And that's a factor of this cubic term. Now, in order to get the remaining factor, I'd have to divide this term into x cubed plus 3x squared plus 25x plus 75. And I can do that using long division. All right. It's somewhat painful, but I can do that. What I could have also done is synthetic division like I mentioned before. Let's do long division first, and then I'll show you a quick synthetic division. So long division, if you remember, 5x cubed plus 3x squared plus 25x plus 75, and I go x squared plus 25. Long division says x squared times what is x cubed? That's an x. I multiply through and get x cubed plus, there's no x squared term, so I skip over that and I get 25x. Now I take and subtract like I did in fourth grade when we were doing long division. Get 3x squared plus 75. Then say x squared times what is 3x squared? That's 3. And I end up with 3x squared plus 75. Those subtract out to 0. So my remaining factor is x plus 3. That's great. And that's what we were looking for anyways. We were looking for the remaining zero. So the remaining zero, if x plus 3 is a factor, is a negative 3. So I had 5i, negative 5i, and negative 3. Now let's go over here and use synthetic division to get this done. And I'll try to squeeze it all in. So if I go 5i into 1, 3, 25, and 75, this is going to get a little bit messy, but again, I want to give you a couple of ways to do that. Multiply these together, get 5i. When I multiply 5i times this quantity, add it up, this is 3 plus 5i. I get a total of 15i, and then 5i times 5i is 25i squared, which is negative 25. Notice the 25s go, and i left with 5i, or 15i, sorry. 15i times 5i ends up being 75i squared, which is negative 75, and I get 0, which is my root. So now, this term here is a factor, and what I can do is I can divide into that. And I can use my conjugate root. So I'll go a negative 5i into this term. Bringing the 1 down, I get negative 5i. Notice the 5i and negative 5i are reduced, so I get 3. Next, I'm going to multiply these together. right? And I'm going to end up with a negative 15 I, which is great because that goes to zero, which means that's a factor, and what's left is my constant term and my x term. So I have x plus 3 left. That's a factor, so my zero is actually negative 3. Whatever way you like to do, go ahead and do. It doesn't bother. We're going to find all zeros of this next function. And we're going to use the calculator for a little bit of help. So what I'll do is I'll bring my calculator up. I'm going to take and plug the function in. 3x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5x minus 2 
is equal to the function. We're going to graph that in the standard window. So zoom six. I get this graph right here. And I notice that it appears to have a root at two, which makes sense because if we look at our p over q values, the p values are the factors of negative two, which is plus and minus one, plus and minus two. And your q values are your factors of three, plus and minus one and plus and minus three. And if I take all possible division combinations of that, two is certainly one of those. So knowing once again that this appears to have a root of two, let's just check it by going to our table, plugging in a two and saying, well, find out what comes out and it's a zero. So certainly that is a zero of the function. So we'll go back over here and say, well, if I want my other zeros, I'm going to use synthetic division by plugging in a 2, listing my coefficients, grinding this out. That's a 6, negative 2, negative 4, 1, positive 2, and 0. So I know that 2 is a factor which I expected. What I'm left with, constant x, x squared term. So I'm left with 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 because that's a factor as well. And I notice, well, hey, is this going to factor? Let's check. If I go 3x, x, 1 and 1, because that's the only way to get 1, and go both negatives, because I need a negative middle, that's not going to work out, because I need a negative 4x. So this actually doesn't factor. I'd have to go to the quadratic formula. So I take the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 4, minus 4 times 3 times 1, all over 2 times the a term. So this ends up being 2 plus or minus 4 minus 12, which is negative 8, all over 6. That's going to simplify to 2 plus or minus 2i root 2 over 6, or notice the 2's factor out and reduce with the 6, so that's 1 plus or minus i root 2 over 3. And there's a conjugate pair in here. So my final solution to this, if I want all roots, I have a real root of 2 and conjugate pairs of 1 third plus or minus i times root 2 over 3. And those are my three roots. So go ahead and fill out the summary form, go to my math lab, do the questions from lesson 15, and we'll see you tomorrow.